Greetings, I'm John the Spirit. I'm Mark Ezekiel. Why have less steam when you could have more steam? And welcome to Sky Greg Recap Super Shorts. It's a steel. And with steel, we can make lots of wonderful things. Like these high-pressure steam solid boilers, which work at double the speed. And cost five steel plates. And also this high-pressure steam solid boiler which produces 18 liters per tick of steel compared to 30 from the solid boiler, but it's, it's still pretty good as long as it's sunny. It actually does not cost- okay, it costs a little bit of steel, but mostly it costs wrought iron and silver. So much silver. I also don't think I ever explained precisely how we switch to potent fluid pipes, which are made of potin. Potin is made from bronze and lead in an alloy smelter. So that gave us lots of extra steam, TM, but it's still nowhere near enough for LV. LV is the next tier of power. All LV machines require LV machine holes, which requires steel, which makes steel the metal of this tier. They also, however, require these strange things called circuits, which are expensive and sad. Before we talk about circuits, let's discuss how we got um, way better smelting than our previous wall of furnaces. The steam oven is a device which can smelt eight items at once. It does require truly enormous amounts of bronze, for the steam machine casings, which require bronze, and the firebox casings, which require bronze, it's all terrible. But once you make it, you can smell eight items at once, you just need to provide steam to the steam input hatch, and we have a steam line right underneath our cute little base. The steam oven has an input bus which accepts items, and an output bus which exports items. The output bus has item auto input enabled, so we didn't actually need this conveyor arch. But we did use a conveyor to get items from this chest into this input bus. If I right-click on the face, you'll see that the conveyor cover, which is on this face, can um, transfer eight items per transfer. We have it set to import into the block that it's on. We don't have a filter in the conveyor. We just pull items in at a rate of eight. Which is a good thing, because if the steam oven receives one item, it will immediately try and smelt it at the same speed as it smelts eight items. So it's better to move items in eight items at once anyway. Anyway, that helped us a little bit. To make any LV machines, which are machines which use electric power of the low voltage, you need a variety of expensive components. Like motors, which require wires and rods and cables. And LV circuits, of which there are three types, only one of which we can make right now, and is also very expensive. Resistors need copper wires. Vacuum tubes need steel bolts and glass tubes and such. Resin printed circuit boards require a lot of wires, which right now we're making at a rate of like three copper to every two wires. It's quite terrible. However, as you start getting LV machines, these recipes get less and less expensive. So our first big leap into LV involved making three machines at once. The basic steam turbine generator, which turns steam into one amp of LV power, and the bender, which turns one metal ingot into one plate, and the wire mill, which can make two wires from every ingot, and also make fine copper wires, which make, um, I believe, resistors cheaper. To make our first circuits, we needed a variety of random basic progression steps, one of which was rubber. Rubber sheets can be made from rubber ingots in the alloy smelter. Rubber ingots come from sulfur dust and raw rubber pulp. Raw rubber pulp is extracted in an extractor from sticky resin which you get from cutting down rubber trees. The extractor itself, in order to be able to make it, we needed glass, but the only way to make glass is in an alloy smelter with glass dust. While glass dust is basically just sand and flint, you need this casting mold for blocks, which requires an empty mold which requires steel. So we needed steel to be able to actually get the extractor. But once we got it, we were able to make rubber plates, which are the things you need to make wires into cables. To make resin printed circuit boards, you need resin circuit boards which require wood planks, which are wood pulps in a compressor, which can be made from planks in a macerator at a rate of 1 to 1. Resistors require paper. There's a couple ways to get paper. The more convenient way, and the way we did not use, is to make it from tree bark, which you get from stripping wood logs on a cutting board. The cutting board, you'll remember, is what we use to get flint from gravel without losing gravel. The other option is, of course, to use sugar cane. The only way to get sugarcane, however, is a trade at the market. You can trade one emerald in at the market. The market is made using red wool as the main annoying component, but you can get red dye from redstone dust and a mortar. 
To get wool in the first place, you need string, which comes from plant fiber, which you can get by using a hammer on dirt. And we have an infinite dirt generator right here. Sugarcane can be grown faster by pressing shift, just like you can do with the trees. But anyway, I think those are all the weird ingredients required for making LV circuits. But there are ways to improve making them. That's why the first buildings we got were the wire mill and bender. We didn't make any other circuits than those which were expressly necessary for the wire mill, bender, and original steam turbine generator because we knew that they would make making more circuits easier. Once we had those circuits, we were able to make the assembler. The assembler's nice because it allows you to double or I think quadruple the efficiency of your steel bolts. Typically, you need two to make a vacuum tube. In the assembler, you need one to make two. And it, of course, increases the efficiency of the glass tubes and the copper wires. You may think, ah, this program circuit requires you to make yet another circuit, but no. The circuit settings tab in all GregTech machines allows you to select your program circuit without actually putting a program circuit there. I believe the circuit settings GUI itself is added by GregTech, but you have the ability to put ghost circuits in thanks to a particular mod. To fully utilize the assembler though, it would be nice to get glue so we can make resistors easier. And we can get glue from a centrifuge, which is what Arch is working on as we speak. Behold, a centrifuge. And now we can make resistors and resin printed circuit boards easier. Our next project was the following doozy, which makes lots and lots of rubber sheets. Bonnie pots can produce rubber logs, sticky resin, and rubber sapling, all of which, all of which can be cooked up in an extractor into raw rubber pulp. We have item filters between the hopper bondy pots and the extractors that blacklist sticks, because the sticks will go in but won't be used for anything, because God hates us. The basic extractors are set to auto-output their items to this chest or to this pipe which goes into this chest. A robot arm between the chest and the chemical reactor keeps 27, at most, raw rubber pulp in the reactor. The robotic arm's number of items transferred per transfer is maximum 8, but you can use the keep exact function to make sure that it'll only let in 27. You can apply a filter instead in keep exact mode, and you can click in a stack of items with a certain number so that the robotic arm will keep in that amount. You can increase the number by right-clicking or decrease the number by left-clicking. To get the sulfur in, we have a robot arm attached to this low-pressure steam furnace, which turns N sulfur ore into two sulfur dust each. We get the N sulfur ore from this simple ore generator. The chemical reactor's auto-output is set to put its rubber fluid, um, which is the blue color for fluid auto-output, by the way, into this basic fluid solidifier with a casting mold on plate, and that dumps its rubber sheets into the drawer. You only need two basic steam turbine generators to run all of this and the extra steam for the low-pressure steam furnace. We're now working on making a lathe, canner, and extractor. The lathe will allow us to make rods twice as efficiently, and screws more efficiently as well. We already have extractors, but those are currently in use. The reason we want extra extractors is because, for example, the vacuum tube recipe requires liquid red alloy, which we can only get using an LV extractor. The canner will allow us to create reusable batteries which we can put into a battery buffer in order to fill up the battery buffer with power using only one steam turbine generator, and then use that battery buffer to power all four of these machines at the same time. So we can run multiple machines at once. The reason this is a good idea is because, well, we're not actually always using this machine processing area, so we're just... we have the ability to make power and we're not doing it. But then, when we want to run multiple machines at once, they might take 64 EU per tick, because that's two machines of 32, but our generator only makes 32 EU per take, so now we need more generators or we'll die instantly. So instead, we'll set up a battery buffer. That way, the steam turbine generator can be filling up the battery buffer even when we're not using these machines. The longest lasting battery is the lithium battery. And since we have lithium ore, we can make lithium dust and fill up those batteries. They're only slightly better than any of the other options, but they're still better. Now that we have these machines, we are in the process of making a lot of shit, especially um, 32 electronic circuits using the improved recipes. However, that does kind of require us to use a lot of the machines at once, so it sure is a good thing that we've hooked up all three of our existing steam turbine generators to this single low voltage 8x battery buffer. Because it's still filling up even while powering um, four machines at the same time? Pretty neat. It is at the cost of turning off our rubber system, but look at all this rubber we have. 409? Behold, 32 basic electronic circuits. 
The next two machines we made were the fluid solidifier, which allowed us to make tin rotors much, much easier. But you need molten tin from the basic extractor first. And the mixer, which will be used for a variety of recipes. One instant convenient one is glowstone for the first time from gold, redstone, and surface quartz dust. You'll eventually need it to make the gallium arsenide, which makes diodes for MV circuits, and to make manganese phosphide, which is used for the LV superconductor, which has no EU loss per meter. Now, however, that we're running all of these machines, there was a time when we said to ourselves, hmm, our super tank, which holds 8,000 buckets, will definitely not have any issues, but we'll know that it has issues if it goes below 6,000 buckets. We just checked for the first time in a hot minute to discover that it has just over 2,000 buckets. So our next best solution is going to be a multi-block boiler called, called the Large Bronze Boiler. It required a cool two stacks of bronze to make all this stuff, and Arch did make all of the other hatches necessary, but we have everything for the large bronze boiler. The boiler can be powered either with solid fuels or liquid fuels, and uses those fuels very fast. For example, it uses 14 lava per tick. Thankfully, the basic lava generator generates lava from nothing at a rate of 1 millibucket per tick, unless you have a cooper nickel coil block underneath it, in which case it runs at 10 per tick. So if you make two basic lava generators and put Cooper Nickel coil blocks underneath them, we can run the steam solid boiler at full speed. It will produce 800 millibuckets of steam per tick. The steam turbine uses two millibuckets to make an EU. So this is basically 400 EU per tick in a single large multi-block, and we could just make more of them if we wanted. The Cooper Nickel coil blocks are not trivial to make, however. Cooper nickel is fine, it's just copper and nickel in an alloy smelter. But you also need a bunch of bronze foils, though it's one bronze to every four foils, that's fine. And liquid tin alloy, which requires tin and iron. Once you fluid extract the liquid tin alloy, you can make your Cooper nickel coil blocks. We're going to be replacing our water pump with this boiler, and we will be using two basic water generators to power both the large bronze boiler and all of these less efficient steam boilers. Initially, when we placed down our two lava generators, we set up two LV input hatches to accept the lava from both of them, because they output directly into a tank above them. However, you need to fit five firebox casings down here, and four different hatches already. A hatch for lava, for water, and then this muffler hatch and maintenance hatch, which I'll talk about. When you make it for the first time, even though it has both lava and water, it won't run right now. In order for it to run for the first time, you need to use the maintenance hatch. Every now and then, very rarely, your multi-blocks may need maintenance. Maintenance requires that you have several Greg Tech tools in your inventory, whichever are required. In this case, wrench, screwdriver, soft mallet, hammer, wire cutter, and crowbar. If I click this slot with an empty hand, maintenance will occur. When I click this button, the maintenance symbol went away, and now the bronze boiler is making steam. It's also outputting a large amount of smoke, which if we had pollution on would probably be pretty bad. Additionally, it makes ashes, which Arch says cannot actually be pulled out of the muffler hatch in a convenient way. Arch is going to try putting something underneath the muffler hatch to see if it can pull out while still leaving an empty space, but we'll see what happens. In news, we cannot actually pull out the ash. But the machine won't stop when it's full. It's just a useful way to get, I don't know, nothing? The centrifuge seems to give a bunch of random stuff with it. Maybe it's useful, who knows? And at last, our steam tank is filling up again. Well, now that we have this boiler, we can support some pretty big power projects from now on. Like running the electric blast furnace, which will use um, 128 EU per tick. We're currently making the materials, but this video has gotten a bit long, so we're going to cut it off here. As always, if you have any feedback, we'd love to hear it. We hope you enjoyed!